Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about modern static code analysis on the example of PVS Studio. Without further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Konstantin Volokovsky. I am a developer of static analyzer myself. I have a role of project leader in my team and also I write technical articles on the matter. So, you may have a question what static code analysis is. You can think of it as an additional pair of eyes during your code review. And what do you do your code review for? Well, apart from maintaining code style and approaches, you try to find mistakes in someone else's code. And that's exactly what Static Analyzer is doing. It searches for errors that are hard to notice, are boring and very tedious to find, or that programmers won't even think of. Let's go over each of these. And the first ones are the errors that are hard to notice. Like this real example from the game called Captain Blood. Here we see a bunch of conditions, but a small copy-paste mistake crawled in. Here the developer copied condition, but they forgot to change the letter L to letter R. Let's go to the error from the Blender project. There are errors that you don't really want to look for because it's very boring to search for them. Like this example. You can look at this method and tell that it copies one object into another. And you probably don't want to examine every single line of that code. But you better to do so, because in just one line, the object field is assigned to itself. And the last one type of errors, but not least, the errors that programmers will may not even consider finding, like this one from Qt Creator. Here, the developer creates an array of characters, and in case of failure, they try to erase memory for it. But they use delete operator, on a variable of pointer void type. And you don't want to have that in your code base, because whilst compilers allow that, this is undefined behavior. The natural question may arise, how does this work? Is this just all bunch of regular expressions? No, of course not. In fact, it works just like compiler does. Let me remind you how they designed on a very high level. Compilers take your source code, then they parse it, build an abstract syntax tree. Then they try to verify it, and if everything is OK, they start to produce machine code that your device is able to run. And that's exactly what Analyzer is doing, except it stops at the analyzing stage, but it performs analysis much more deeply. It uses tools like semantic analysis and data flow, and I talk about them a bit later. Then it just produces a report for you to check. So you might have a question. Is this relevant compared to compilers? Because it's true, compilers are getting better lately. They even learn to find errors that only analyzer used to find. And actually, this pays off. Now some errors become very rare. For example, have you seen this famous meme? It portrays a pretty silly mistake where developer mix up assign and equals operators. And it might seem very trivial, but we really found errors like that in projects. For example, take a look at Intel AMT SDK project. The error is as simple as it seems. But the fun part is, in our database of errors, where we collect mistakes from open source project, we found 14 bugs like this. But the last time we found such error was in 2016. I believe that one of the prime reasons for that is because all decent compilers nowadays warn about such code and protect you from making these mistakes. But it's worth to mention that static analyzers are evolving as well. They surpass compilers and set direction for their development. And not to mention that the main goal of compilers is, well, to compile your code, while the analyzer's sole responsibility is to make your code better and safer. And because of that, they are not bounded by limitations such as analysis time. Also, analyzers have more technologies that are not needed by compilers, like interprocedural and intermodular analyses that really power up data flow and make it able to track values of variable throughout the entire flow of your application, or taint analysis that helps to track tainted data from the outside world. In the end, we find bugs in compilers too, like this one from LLVM. Here, developer copied the condition, but they forgot to change variable inside it. OK, let me show you more interesting errors that we are able to find. Consider this, just one ternary operator. 
But developer, the references, this variable right after checking it against null pointer. Pretty silly mistake. What do else do we got? Like this one. Here, developer overloads equals operator. This method marked as no except. It means that you cannot throw exceptions there. Indeed, there are no exceptions thrown inside the body of this method, but it uses the setName method, and it is able to throw exception. If that happens, the application will crash. And now look at this one. It may even seem okay at first glance, but take a closer look at active input type. It has a steady optional type, and in this condition, it will always result in true. That happens because, of course, there is an object inside this variable. So, you may end up referencing a null pointer in that case. To fix the issue, you have to either reference an std optional object or use a value method. And the last error I will show you today. Here, the analyzer tells us that then and else branches of the if statement are same. But is this really a main issue? Take a closer look at the formatting. It appears that developer wanted to use preprocessor directive else, but they forgot the hash symbol. Thus, they altered the program's logic. So, even though analyzer pointed at a slightly different error, a developer can find out a real error by examining the code. You may have a question. How do I integrate a static analyzer into my existing project? Sure, there are challenges to find. First, of course, it's dangerous to fix everything without thinking. But if your project is already in production, then most of the analyzer's warnings will be either false positive or not critical ones. However, it's worth to mention that the fixed issues were probably found using pricey methods like users' bug reports. And yes, you cannot just leave warnings of the analyzers as they are, because new ones will get drowned in the old ones. There are a couple approaches you can use. The first one is the ratchet approach. The gist of it? A developer can only commit code if a certain number of warnings is maintained. In this approach, even if a developer picks others' code instead of theirs, the overall trend will still be towards better quality of the code. The other one is the baseline approach. In PVS Studio, you can suppress all current warnings, thus enabling yourself to work with only new or modified code right away. But that doesn't stop you from fixing the older warnings if you have time to do so. The last thing I wanted to talk about is integration of static analyzers. They offer integrations with various tools for increased convenience, like IDEs, so you can check analyzers' reports right there, or with build systems, or with CI-CD tools, so you can centralize how reports are gathered and distributed. For example, you can take a look at the integrations supported by PVS Studio. You can work with our analyzer right in Visual Studio, CLion, Qt Creator, or Visual Studio Code. Or you can integrate our analyzer with Make, CMake, or MS Build, Miss Build systems. Or you can use it with CI CD tools like GitHub, Jenkins, or SonarCube. And on that note, I'm happy to answer your questions.